I do think we should have. I think we should have. Oh yeah. We should get. How about my name? Or my name is. For, for all of the names. We shouldn't because the first thing I will do with that is uh, write what, and uh, nobody's going to appreciate that humor, and uh, then I'll be embarrassed for having a terrible sense of humor. It's just all around. I'm vulnerable about this. I'm already getting triggered. So this looks better. It's better because you've raised the temperature to 210, which I can see on the display. So I'm curious, have you seen any other modes of this display? Like if you got the temperature up to an unsafe level, would it start flashing red or something like that? This is one of the things I love about this machine, is it doesn't have a bunch of extra doohickeys and like a temperature alarm. I have a, a Cube Pro, which is made by 3D Systems in my classroom that somebody bought for way too much money. And it has a filament feed sensor, uh -huh. so it, it'll detect if it's... You, you heard that clicking before? I did. That, yeah, that, that, printer, that. that printer would just cancel the print immediately gotcha. when it detects some fault in the filament feed. But you're a fan is, of not having that because... Cause I'll, figure it, I'll figure it out. I'll know that kind of stuff. Like, don't, you don't have to tell me. And plus, every Every time you add a new doohickey, it adds complexity to a system, just making it more likely to break. like doing a five-hour print in that machine, all the like somebody bumps it and it detects some filament feed error and just cancels it. That's print a good over. point. Yeah, that's a good Five example. hours into a 12-hour print, there's nothing you can do about it. That filament's gone. Plus, and it's not even saving its position or anything. It's canceling. That's so. proprietary cartridges, too. So that, you know, that was, gotcha. you know, these are $12. I'm spending 150 for the same amount of filament for that printer. It seems almost like they're, they're basically telling you this is for people who don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And so when someone gets that, it's like for people who buy a Hummer H3, well, we yeah. automatically know a lot about you and that because you have right bought now, a really shitty vehicle. That printer right now is working great. It's under extruder. It's old. The heat element on, on the extruder is just fading, perhaps. Yeah. And if I had control over the whole system, I would just crank the print temp up until it stopped under extruding. But I can't. That's not because option. right, yeah. It's, it's all proprietary. It's all locked down. So what I'm going to do to that printer? That's a weekend project that you know for one of my copious amounts of free weekends. I want to wait. Is that sarcasm or not? Super sarcasm. Okay. I live in Weddingville right now. Gotcha. Uh, but I want to open it up, take out the proprietary electronics. I could go and buy the same control board right from from Creality or any other control board for thirty bucks. Uh -huh. Make a couple of wiring harnesses to go from the proprietary wiring to the open source. So you're going to circumvent it. You're going to use their hardware, but circumvent it with the open source stuff. Their hardware is great. Well, I wouldn't say it's good. Right. No, that's awesome. So you're going to take their proprietary stuff, the good things, in, and you're going to take out the bad things with the open stuff. That's awesome. Is that, is that a project you're going to document? Maybe. It seems like it'd be a fantastic mod to but, add to the community. But but nobody owns that machine, and if they did, they threw it out a long time ago. There's nobody else really running that machine. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so it's just this. It's not something that somebody would commonly emulate. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the weird thing about this was this printer was at one point an open source model. That Is it the one down in the basement? No. Okay. 3D Systems then bought the company that was publishing these open source plans and closed sourced them, and then wrapped it up in a box, added all these extra doohickeys, the proprietary cartridges, and then sold it. So it's like a good, reasonably good machine, it just they wrapped it up in garbage. So Let's do it okay. you can tell that it's working better than it was before? Yeah, if you can see down towards the first couple of layers, there's that skipping. You see that? Yeah, yeah, where there's a little bit of edges. The next, the next quarter inch of layers is fine. Okay, so basically where I see the dots... That was that's what you call yeah. skipping. Where yeah. it, what was what was happening Just there? Just under extruding. Okay, and so if you had the sock on it or if you had tape on it, it wouldn't be doing that. Hopefully, but your adjustment we'll to out. 210 degrees yeah. has kind of compensated there. a little bit. I ordered them last There's night. Uh, so this should be here by Friday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's super. I've learned a ton. Thank you so much for giving that demo. I'm gonna leave this here and yeah. play with it over the next. This is, the, this is the greatest irony is I got this machine. I was all excited. I was like, oh, I'll set up some overnight prints. The thing I neglected was my very light sleeping girlfriend who can hear this, that whiz, anywhere in the house. So one thing I've heard is that the motor smoothers yeah. make it Cut quieter. It. Yeah. So I, I might put that, and you can get the motor dampeners that, that put a, basically a spring in between the motor and the 
Ah, to further reduce the vibration. Well, cool. both Ryan's, but actually. Yeah. I'm, I met Ryan. Ryan yeah. P and Ryan P. So sick. you can't even like yeah, have well, no, we, 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 Rye. Or You're what? Rye. Like right. So we've already, no. yeah. Well, my cousin called me Rye Bread growing up, and I called her Nutmeg. Um, I, uh, we've already established that that's Ryan. I'm other Ryan. Okay. And now you're Rye. I'm Rye. Until, until he oh. defeats me in battle. Yeah, basically, it has to be a title that is won. Yeah. So we were talking about maybe you're the one that. On the yeah, see the one. Channel is talking about the Glowforge. And yeah. Yeah. So I've I've read one of those. I mean, enough to kind of have an idea of what the, what's it about. What um, do you mean? So and Ryan just bought so one uh, a couple of weeks ago. Right? Oh, you have. Okay. So what are you interested? I'm, I'm what are you what are you interested in? Well, so in knowing? I thought there was a um, discussion about whether the, the, or the group oh, or, or personally or, himself. Okay, or but for a bigger one. Yes, we do there want to buy it. I think still yes. a conversation about buying one here. Yeah, yeah. It's just a toss up. Well, of putting all of the things that we need and then this. So yeah. one of the things that we need to yeah, one of the things sure. we need to do, I think, is first grow the membership a little more because right now we're just at the break even point so we're not quite well, in a territory where we're comfortable and I think that part of growing the membership may be to offer things like hey we've got a fantastic laser cutter or hey we've got yeah. but this is a discussion for the whole membership to actually decide on um, but uh, then we have to also do the research about all right like we've got a, a laser cutter back there that was recovered from a, a defunct ma maker space all right. and okay. it works and it's not bad it's how I trained myself on how to use a la laser cutter but I can I can tell you from my personal experience over the last month with my Glowforge, uh, there's no comparison. Like a well calibrated, yeah, nice yeah, Glowforge yeah, no, like, will produce the, the, a result that is significantly better than what we can do on of, that right now. Like, there's a lot of constraints with it as well, right? There so are. There's big, some, some big. Do you want, do you want an iPhone that you can't tinker with? But oh, I agree. Trust me. Can use yeah, we're kind of, want, so, one of the things know, that so gives me a big, warm, fuzzy this. feeling about why I purchased this is that the community of Glowforge users is super happy with their for like across the board right. like there are occasional complaints about this or that but overall like everybody's super happy um the business model that people that glowforge has set up with regards to their kind of app store with regards to selling designs or selling materials um some people that rubs the wrong way and i was rubbed the wrong sure. way by that but now that i've gotten into the ecosystem i can see that they're actually offering really high quality materials at a reasonable cost right right and if that continues if they don't like abuse the hell out of it then that's actually really a, a huge feature yeah. because it's actually like they they sell you wood that's already finished yeah. uh, it, that's guaranteed to be of a certain level of reproducibility and quality and it, it's pre-taped and right. like all that stuff basically makes it super convenient to use and if it's sold at a cost that's reasonable that's actually a huge that's benefit that's what i'm saying to me it's, it's apple versus like well, you right. know and you I know also, a cheap okay. chinese phone that it has higher specs i mean 3d printers have pretty low tolerances by comparison to laser cutters right oh, you just every time the, the optics of a laser cutter have to be super precise a 3d printer that you can tinker with and you can Fuck, you know, <coughs> fuss with the axes, axes and mess with things is fine. But I genuinely don't think that you need that level of hackability in a machine that's as sensitive as a laser cutter. Yeah, it's you just kind of the want, and, and, and the, the only, size for me. the only options. The size? Yeah. Wait, the size of, oh, the, how large it is? Yeah. How small it is. Wait, I'm confused. Of oh, the Glowforge. Oh, you need to be able to work with a larger bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And, and, and like, those, those cheaper, larger, Laser cutters are—they uh, require some maintenance. That's for sure. You know, they're not just. Oh, you mean like the them. the larger models sold as like prosumer level stuff, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Trotex and or Epilogue. Zing, Epilog, right? Epilog's well, the not gold even standard. The Epilog, but like talking like the five thousand dollar Chinese ones. That yeah. Oh, like for manufacturing are, stuff, like for yeah. companies that are actually doing large well, runs. Well, the, the, yeah, I mean that's where I've used them before, but... Oh, okay. Uh, so, like, fiber lasers? No, no. Just I'm, regular, okay. Yeah, yeah big yeah, CO2 yeah, lasers. Just the bigger ones that are cheap. I mean, as cheap as the Glowforge, but two or three times the right. size. So it's kind of... I, I, I don't... I guess my point is, is I'm not sure where 
Make if they want to, like, what are they trying to serve? They're trying to serve the, no, the, to the, the, the broad general audience. Unfortunately, it's the whole spectrum. Right. There are people, there's, the woman who acquired that and trained everybody on it is I'm curious, artist. Ryan, is there anything else you wanted to say about this before I stop the video? No, not really. I mean, that's uh, not the greatest performance today, but, you know. No, it was very useful in terms of demonstration. Yeah. And plus, you showed us what can go wrong, which is in itself useful. Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to hack on it, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have a bad time. But if you're cool with dealing with some of these issues, it's a great machine. And it, you know, I've been moving this in and out of my classroom and back to my, my house and back and forth. So it's it's sturdy. It's, it's been in flux. But if you set this up, lock, lock it in. It'll be very repeatable and reliable. Nice. Well, thanks again, Ryan. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna leave it here, and as soon as I get those socks, I'll bring them over. And because is the the lull spot working? Yeah, I used it this week. Oh, okay. Sweet. Said it was oh.